Hey, DDCHJ here, and welcome to Autobot Start to Finish. In this episode, I'll be showing you all the details you need to know in order to make a bot, and how Gosling Utilities will help you get there. Hey everyone, welcome back to the series. Right now we're looking at a fun visualization of what happens to our bot during an Autobot match. Let's pause and take a closer look. As you can see on the bottom here, we have a game tick packet that's getting hurled at our bot at about 120 times a second. And on the top, we have a simple controller state getting thrown back at our bot. These are the two main structures that are getting tossed about during a match between our bot and all of the bots currently participating. Let's go take a look at what's in the game tick packet. Okay, so here we are in the input and output section of the Arlbot wiki, and this is the game tick packet. If we scroll down, we can see everything that is inside of the packet, and there's a ton of information in here. We can see there's a list of game cars that has the location, rotation, velocity, angular velocity of every car, whether or not it's been demolished, if it's touching the ground, if it's going supersonic, all of this stuff, every single car, the number of cars, every single boost and whether or not it's active, the ball, location, rotation, velocity, etc. Who last touched the ball, plenty of information. Our job when making a bot is to take this information and turn it into something useful and ultimately create a simple controller state to give back to Arlbot. Let's go check out what a simple controller state consists of. Okay, scrolling down on the same page, we come to the controller state, and there's actually an example of how to use it right in here. The get output function is what our bot calls to tell our bot to start the tick. It gives us a game tick packet, and you can see in here, we actually are creating an instance of a simple controller state, setting the throttle of that controller to one, and then returning the controller. So in this very simple case, the bot would just simply drive forward. Of course, throttle isn't the only thing that goes into a controller state. We also have steer, pitch, yaw, roll, jumping, boosting, handbrake, and use item, which is for rumble. As you can probably start to see, it's going to take some work to decipher what's in the game tick packet and come up with what we want to do to create a controller to return to Arlbot. The first step is to pre-process the game tick packet. This step is pretty much mandatory. What we're going to do is take everything that was in that game tick packet and convert it into our own structures so that we can use it internally. The reason we do this is because if the game tick packet ever changes, we don't want our code to break. Additionally, we want to make it into a format that's easier to use. We're currently looking at the get output function inside of objects.py line 87 of Gosling Utilities. You'll notice really quickly that one of the first things we end up doing is pre-processing. Gosling Utils takes care of the pre-processing step for you, and it converts pretty much everything in the game tick packet into an internal structure that's easier to use. So you may be wondering, what are those structures and how do I use them? Well, objects.py is filled with these. We have a car object that stores all the information for a car, a ball object for the ball, boost objects, goal objects. These aren't included in the game tick packet. These are just handy to have. It's locations of the goals plus their left and right side posts for each goal. So orange and blue side goal. Also, we have a game object that includes lots of different flags like whether or not we're at a kickoff, whether or not the round's active, how much time's left in the game, etc. Now, of course, these are just the classes. However, you're more interested in the instances of these classes located within the Gosling agent. Now, if we go back to the top of the file in Gosling agent, you'll be able to see where all of these instances are made and what they're called. For example, self.ball is equal to a ball object and self.game is equal to a game object. Some useful things to have is self.friends, which is a list of all of the car objects for your own team, and self.foes, which is a list of all car objects for your foes. Self.me is the car object for your own bot. All of these files are commented really well, so I'm not going to go through every single detail, but generally, if you need to find out something about how one of the objects works or how it's named, you can find it inside of objects.py. Additionally, if we go back into helloworld.py, where we refer to the Gosling agent as agent, because we're using PyCharm, it'll autofill a lot of this stuff. So for example, if we need our current velocity, we can just go ahead and type agent.me. And we'll be able to see all of the attributes for agent.me, which is our car. And if we come down to the bottom, we should see velocity right here. We can even go a step further and find out that we can get the angle of this between something else. We can clamp it between two other vectors. 
copy it, cross it, dot it, flatten it, so much stuff. We can also get dot x, dot y, dot z, a lot of stuff. You'll find that a lot of the information is laid out pretty easy to find, and anything that isn't is well commented. I hope. Now that we know what we have access to, it's time to make a controller state to return to Arlbot. The Gosling agent already has a controller that it's going to return, so really our goal is to modify that controller to do what we want. There's a couple ways we can do this. The first is by directly modifying the controller. For example, I can say agent.controller.boost, let's say, equals true. And so that would cause our bot to start boosting. While modifying the controller directly does work, there's a lot of tools that we have in Gosling Utils in order to make things easier. As I mentioned in the last episode, we have default PD and default throttle, which steer our bot and control its speed respectively. Default PD and default throttle are pretty easy to use. Default throttle is the simplest, where you just give it the agent, the speed you want to go at, and optionally the direction, one for forward and negative one for reverse. Default PD works the same way. Pass it the agent, a local target, one for forward, negative one for reverse. Maybe wondering what a local target is. Well, that is a target in local coordinates. A local coordinate is a coordinate with respect to the car's axes, not the field's axes. So instead of using X, Y, Z, we're using forward, left, and up relative to the car. If the ball is directly in front of our car, we could expect a local coordinate of, say, 200, 0, 0, meaning it's 200 units directly in front of us, 0 units to the left, and 0 units above us. This is really useful for steering and driving on the walls, and in general, it's much more useful for mechanical code, which is why it shows up in Gosling Utilities a lot. In order to convert a normal coordinate into local coordinates, all you have to do is take the relative distance and pass that to the agent.me.local function. That's what's going on in the example bot. We first get a relative target, which is just the difference between the ball's location and our location. That's our relative distance. Pass that to the local target. You can see it going in right here. And once we have that, we can give that to default PD and our car will steer towards that local target. It's pretty easy once you get used to it, and extremely helpful. So that just about wraps up everything for today. What we've learned is that there's a plethora of information that the Gosling agent organizes for you to help you write your bot, and there's a couple ways you can modify the controller that eventually gets sent back to Arlbot to drive your bot. Now there is one more way we can modify that controller, and that's with routines, but we're going to save that for the next video. Thank you all for watching, and hope to see you in the next one.